Welcome to my channel. I'm Zhang Jingxu. Let's look at the problem 54 in chapter 32. Chapter 32 is about light reflection refraction. Now we have a parallel beam of light that contains two wavelengths, lambda 1 and lambda 2. This lambda 1 and lambda 2 get in in a glass. So we check our test book and we can very easily know the index for n1 and the index for n2 for these two two waves. We just write them as n1 and 2 there. Now, we know it into the equilateral glass, right? Equilateral glass, look at this one. So that means this angle is 60 degree, each angle 60 degree. At what angle does each beam leaves this uh, object? So that means we need to find theta 1 and theta 2. Because these two waves is almost uh, very similar, except they have n1 and n2 index is different. So we can draw a simple picture, look like this one. See, the wave get in and travels through the glass and get out. So there, this one, we can think this is the n air. Okay, n air, index of n air is just one. This is n air. I think we solved the similar problem in progress. And then the index for this angle, for this uh, triangle is n, the, right? And uh, now we need to find the theta d. We can know theta a, theta b, theta c, theta d. How can we do that? So write down snail equation. Write down snail equation. We can know the instant wave n air sine theta a equal to n sine theta b, right? And then come to zero, n sine theta c equal to n air sine theta d. And uh, now we can see, n air is given, sin theta a is given, n we don't know yet, but uh, we can assume we know it because we have two cases, n1 and n2, right, given. So sin theta b we don't know. See, in this equation, very easily, very easily, we can know theta b, right, because uh, other quantity are given. So we can write down the equation for the sin theta b, look like this one. And we know the n l is just equal to 1, so it can be simplified as there. So we write it there. Now, next one. Uh, we can look at this one. n is given. Sin theta c, we don't know. n l is given. Sin theta d, we don't know, but we want to know theta d. So it looks like we need to find another relationship between theta c and theta d, right? Luckily, we know it. You can see we have this triangle, so we can draw this triangle from there to there, back to there. In this triangle, we know the all the angles equal to the 180 degree. See, this angle, how much for this angle? 90 degree minus theta b, right? 90 degree minus theta b, because this is normal. Now, for this triangle, how much? 90 degree minus theta c, and in this triangle, 60 degree equal to 180 degree, right? Now, we solve this equation, we can get the theta c there. Now we can see theta c is given, theta c is given, can you find theta d? Yes. So we convert this equation, we can see, it looks like this one. So it is n sine theta c divided by n air, n air is one, so it looks like the sine, an arc tangent sine theta. Sin, then this one, n sine theta c, and input the sine theta c inside, right? Input sine theta c inside, it becomes sine 60 degree minus sine theta b, and sine theta b equal to this one. See, now it looks like if we know the n, see, n, so n is given, sine theta a is given, sine theta b is given. If we know the n, we can solve the, we can get the quantity for sine theta for theta d, right? So now things become very easy. We write down this equation and there. In this case, you can say in first case n1, n1 in first case n1 is 1.642. So in this case, theta b1 is there. We input all the given quantity, get us there. And uh, input the sin theta b1 inside, we get the sin theta d1. Similarly, we can make the n equal to second case, this is n2. So we input n2 inside, we get the theta b2, and then 
Solve it, get the answer there. Input it inside, we get the theta d1. The problem is solved. Thank you.